Hey everyone and welcome to this month's Patreon tutorial. In this one we will be generating a tiling pattern by combining the power of SOPs with COPs in Odino 21. There will be many tips and tricks along the way, so I hope you join me in this one. I will also post a free lesson here on YouTube. Thank you. And now we will work on subdividing this geometry to look like cobblestones, but easier said than done because in order to we could easily do this let's say with echo side quad remesher so let me just change these and uh, let's say so interrupt and let's change this to this version and this can work but I also need we need to reduce this it. and as you can see this works but not everyone has access to this so I'm gonna do it in a custom way. I'm gonna leave these in here, just in case. And we're gonna do this in a different way. First of all, I'm gonna calculate the connectivity. And this should be on brims. And then I'm gonna iterate over this. So for each named primitive, and let's name this class. And now the idea now is to create some UVs on this and then move it, move the position to the UV geometry and uh, do the subdivisions in there and then move it back to the this deformed shape. So I'm going to start by doing a skeleton 2D to extract the silo, the, the, the curve from it. So in this case, I'm just going to change in here the resemble size. I can get rid of these and do a resemble size of 0.03. And from here, we do, I just need to make sure I don't have any values going over zero on the Y. Because we might have some values in, in there. Then we're going to do a resemble. So as you can see, this is following the shape more or less. And I'm going to do a value of 0.05, it's fine. Then just delete some attributes that we don't need. <coughs> Finally, we're going to create some normals. So, uh, as you can see, uh, the this curve doesn't go fully to the end of the geometry and this will create some problems so we need actually to extend this curve and for that i'm just going to create some normals along the tangents and then let's do a little trick in here to extend this if if you notice we have in here on point group new ends this is created from this skeleton to denote so if we target those points and so, as you can see, we have 0 and 9, so let's try something, let's do float sign, it will be equal to i at pt_num modulo 2, and we, so every other point, and we move 2 and subtract 1 to have 0 central offset, now if we multiply the normal by sign let's see and yeah we get the same result i was doing in a different way but this one will be much simpler since we have this even number in here and odd in there so this will work now we can do a simple pick and we will pick the new ends and we can extend this just a little bit so 0.025 it's fine then we can just delete some attributes and do a sweep. And this sweep will be a ribbon. And we want to compute UVs, of course, because we want to transfer them to the original geometry. And we can just set the size of 46. We might need to invert this. Oh yeah, reverse cross section, and the rest is fine. And then we can do a 
on the mesh we can do a simple remesh let's see how much i use so point oh one now let's do the labs it will be transfer and as you can see we will have these uvs so we might need to play with the settings in here so uh, tolerance of 0.3 will work better and now as you can see since we have this flat geometry we can move it to the position and then do the cutting in there so for that i'm just gonna go in here and create here and now name it on hp since we want to deform this a bit later and now i also want to do a uv flat make these way smaller so i'm just gonna do preserve seams and preserve island shapes and antique material so it moves to the zero to one space then i'm gonna do a measure on the area so we have cons consistent um, polygon size at the end and i'm gonna measure throughout so the full area of the geometry split uv seams and promote this then we can attribute swap to move this to the position so from uv to position let's have a look at that then we can simply hide this and remove shared edges And so we might need a normal here just in case. Not normal. It's fine. Let's get rid of this. And now we can simply divide these along the edge. So divide nodes. And now we need to do breaker polygon and do convex. And in this case, we can do based on the bounding box exercise. So B box zero D X size divided let's say by ten and we get this result maybe by sixteen something like this and now we can do the same we can do the same as we did uh, in the example above so this form and with the XYZ dist function. So let's take this and the rest it will be after the attribute swap. So let's bring that on. And then this rest. And let's move this one to here. This one in here. And let's connect this. And we get this result. Let's do everything, but as you can see, if we don't do it based on the area, we will have inconsistent uh, polygon sizes, so it will work well in these ones, because they are identical, but not in here. So, the problem is the area is too small, so we could have normalized it, but let's just do this in a more simple way. I'm, I need to divide this by an integer number, so what I can do is do a seal. And reading the area, so dream zero, primitive zero will be fine. I want to read the area and the component zero, and then just multiply it by a big number, let's say 3000. And we get now a consistent size of polygons independent of the size of the geometry. So, as you can see, the deform is just the same as before the XYZ dist function and reading from the original position. So, that's fine. And now we can just merge in these. So merge this with this. And we can attribute delete. And delete everything, I believe. Then we can also group delete. And delete every group. Uh, so we need to do this but also to merge in this so let's create a merge 
can match these in here and do these in here. And as you can see, we have now the full shape done. Let's just do some cleanup work. I just want to create an ID for Bob, so let's triangle on the primitives. So I add ID, it will be the prim number, and we need to increase by one because the background will also be zero, so we need to increase one. And this goes on primitives. Let's do D as you can see. Then we do a unique points to separate the geometry. And finally, we do the primitive properties and do a small transformation. So we decrease this to 35. And let's just create the knob. And this will be our final output. So guys, this is basically done. The next step is to move these into cups and do the final material. Let's do that now.